Welcome to Creative Commons, a history by Alicia Lynham Bowen. This presentation is licensed under Creative Commons version 4.0. So reuse, remix, do whatever you like, y'all. Once upon a time, human knowledge was retained, reused, revised, remixed, and redistributed without limits. Storytellers and musicians carried tales and songs on their lips and in their fingers as they passed the human experience across generations. While people did get possessive of ideas once they started to write them down, it wasn't until the invention of the printing press that copyright law as we know it today began to be codified. And that was all well and good for a few hundred years. That is, until along came the internet. With the advent of the internet, users around the world had the opportunity to collaborate and adapt works like never before in human history. I mean, look at the Bernie memes from the last few days. But there was and remains one major obstacle, copyright law. And that brings us to Creative Commons. Creative Commons is three things at the same time, a movement, a set of licenses, and an organization. Let's start with the story of Creative Commons as a movement. The battle between the internet and copyright in the US came to a head in 1998 when Congress passed the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act. Yes, that's Sonny Bono. This act changed the rules governing the lifespan of a copyright. Previously, under the 1976 Copyright Act, copyright standardly lasted for the life of the creator plus 50 years, or for 75 years for an item under corporate authorship. The Sonny Bono Act extended creator copyright to 70 years, and it extended corporate copyright to 120 years. It's sometimes called the Mickey Mouse Protection Act, because the Walt Disney Company had been lobbying for years to extend their copyright protection over Mickey Mouse, who was due to enter the public domain. Even after the Sonny Bono Act, Mickey's time is up again in 2024, so watch this space. But back to our story. Enter Stanford Law Professor and Creative Commons founder Lawrence Lessig. Lessig felt that Congress continuing to change the rules to allow copyrights to never expire was unfair. He believed that new works needed to enter the public domain in order to encourage further creativity. Eric Eldridge agreed. Eldridge was the owner of an online site which reprinted works in the public domain. If no further works were allowed to enter the public domain, Eldridge would endlessly find himself unable to publish any works written after the early 1920s. The internet had made so many out-of-print books available to audiences for the first time and had made companies like Dover Publications, which offers cheap mass market copies of books originally published before the 1920s available in print. By continually extending copyright protections, more and more titles would remain out of print and unable to be seen by increasing generations of people while estates and corporate bodies protected their own interests. Lessig represented Eldred in Eldred v. Ashcroft which went to the Supreme Court in 2003. On one side were a host of book and music publishers. On the other, internationally known bodies like the Motion Picture Association of America and ASCAP. Eldred lost his case, but Creative Commons, the organization was born. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization with staff working around the world to promote the core ideals of Creative Commons, enabling the sharing of culture and knowledge. In 2002, the first Creative Commons licenses were made available. While creators still retain their copyright, Creative Commons licenses offered these creators more flexibility to grant certain rights to their work to the public to adapt and reuse their creations. Today, Creative Commons licenses have been applied to nearly 2 billion works across 9 million websites, and the numbers keep growing. And finally, Creative Commons is also a movement. The CC Global Network has over 600 members across 40 chapters around the world, and there's room in it for you, too, if you believe in an open Internet and accessibility for all. From Wikipedia editors to open source software supporters, the movement has a place for everyone. 
So that's the basic story of how Creative Commons became an organization, a set of licenses, and an entire movement. Thanks for tuning in, and for more information, see these resources and please visit creativecommons.org.